Speaking of feeling anxious, dogs may actually, they might be, some of them might be known for being lovable, but did you mm. know that just like humans, dogs can also experience social anxiety? Yeah, that's right, but there's good news, mm -hmm. because you can prevent and help ease your furry friend's mind with a few very simple steps. Yes, joining us this morning to help us find the right solution is dog trainer Hannah Richter, and she brought along her friend, oh, look Bonita. Oh, Bonita. She is Bonita. She is. Oh, my God. Good look morning to both of you. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us here. Tell us very quickly what breed she is and how she got to be so perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> Miss Bonita is a Havanese, and she is seven years old, and she honestly just genetically has such a lovely temperament yep. and has been very chill, but uh, she has also had lots of good training as well to help her with her good manners, but yes, she is just about as chill as they come. She is so chill, but I wonder, I have a Staffordshire Terrier, and he is the opposite of chill. Yeah. He has anxiety, but mm -hmm. since you are the expert, what are some of the common anxieties uh, that we see in dogs? Absolutely. Hello, ma'am. <laughs> um, so some of the most common anxieties that we tend to see socially are fear of people, fear of other dogs. Dogs can also be afraid of sounds, of places, of different things. Any kind of new stimuli could be be scary to a dog um, and recently especially since the pandemic we've seen a big increase in separation anxiety mm -hmm. or dogs who are having more trouble being alone now after the pandemic so those are those are some of the main social anxieties yeah. we tend to see I'm so sort of things that are the stimuli right and I was sort of faced with that too because during the pandemic that's when I, the dog came into my life yeah but now we're both out of the house a lot what I've done I don't know if this is a good idea or not but right before we leave we usually give a little treat the so the connection to us leaving at least is a little positive Absolutely. in its own weird way. You know, I don't know what she does after we leave. She's probably sitting there. What, kind of, what kind of breed is, is I have a miniature dachshund. They are so and, cute. Yeah, you know, very cute. But speaking of anxiety, there was noise and going a little construction going on down below me the other day. Two straight hours. Two arr, arr, arr. barked. I thought you would heard her voice. Yeah. How does it how do they keep going and what could I have possibly done at that point? Absolutely. So I think in some ways in those moments, just creating space can help so much. I think like if the sound, let's say, is at a window, right. if I can just move the dog away from the window, maybe oh, try tried. moving them into another room <laughs> no. for a little bit, then giving the dog maybe a, a food toy or puzzle to work on mm -hmm. so they have something to do while the sounds are happening. And then during training, I would approach it as starting to, like you were saying, create positive associations with those sounds with loud noises right. um, and trying to teach the dog that all they need to do is notice those sounds right. rather than alert us or react to those sounds. Are there certain breeds that are more susceptible to being anxious than others? Because the Staffy, I think, is known for loving humans, being very protective of humans, but not liking other dogs. Um, is that yeah just like you just like you said I mean I think genetically some dogs were bred to be a little bit more <coughs> protective than other dogs or could be a little bit more sensitive mm -hmm. um, it really can either be a genetic trait or it could be something that's more learned so I think while some breeds are more prone to anxiety it's just like people like right. e within every breed dogs have different personalities right. as well right no we, i mean barking is obvious <laughs> that kind of a thing what other s more subtle things would you notice in your dog that it may be a suffering from some type of anxiety absolutely so a lot of times what we'll see first is just turning <laughs> or looking like away bonita is staring right at you yeah. which is and a good looked, sign but and then she, she said away. yes i just need she a little like, break for a second <laughs> yep um so turning looking away moving away um often you'll see cowering or mm -hmm. leaning back you might oh. see the tail tucking oh. under the legs um but dogs are so communicative with their bodies a lot of times you can tell exactly how that dog is feeling about the interaction if you just know how to read their body language. Right. Now we have other pets besides yeah, dogs, dogs that also can suffer from anxiety. Cats, hamsters, who knows, <laughs> whatever. How would you gauge a, a cat's a little more, I would think, a little more difficult to read because they're always hiding their cards a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think all animals definitely experience anxiety uh, in the same way that we do. I think heart rate, uh, accelerated heart rate is something that we see in most animals. We see increased frequency of breathing as animals get anxious um, and often sweating. Uh, for dogs, it's sweat on their paws that we tend to notice. So uh, definitely other animals experience anxiety and and have similar signs of anxiety as we do honestly so going by what you're saying you know get them out of the space if you know the anxiety is coming on 
um, with Dog in particular, I'm moving, we are moving on Saturday, and we're already thinking, what do we do with Nico? Because he is going to, he's already sensing that his favorite blue chair is gone, mm -hmm. his blue sofa has stuff on it, and so he's looking at me like, lady, what are you <laughs> doing to me? My boyfriend mentioned maybe we do a little CBD. I mean, what do you, do you have any suggestions hmm. for what to do? I already know this is going to be high anxiety for me. Never mind him. So yeah. what can I do for him? Absolutely. So I would say in good news, dogs are more uh, adaptable to okay. new spaces than cats are. I know cats can be, uh, have a harder mm -hmm. time moving. So yes. in good news, oh. hopefully your pup will have an okay time just naturally. But I'd say starting to try and figure out a daily schedule is going to help so that when your pup gets there, you already have yep. a bit of a routine to fall into. I would go ahead and establish a place for the dog's better crate so that they have kind of a home base. And then I think from day one, just starting to have good associations with the space, playing in the, right. in the new apartment, yeah. uh, and just starting to kind of set up what the routine and space will be is going to set you up for success. Awesome. Fingers crossed. And a great Hannah. information. Thank you, so Hannah and Hannah Bonita. Bonita. Bonita is just, she's, beautiful. she's a lover. As you, as you pointed her. out, she's better quaff than both of us today. She's got the best quaff. <laughs> she really does everything. Wow, she's got it going on. Thank, Thank you again for joining us. You at home, we will post all of these fantastic tips on our website at pix11news.com. All right.